Okay, so let's get started with MapReduce today. Okay, this was today. You know, today's session is a, a long-awaited one. We've been uh, uh, thinking about MapReduce right from first class, and there were questions there. So today is the time when we'll get answers to all those questions. So are are you guys able to see the screen? Okay, we'll try to understand where MapReduce is used. Okay, what were the traditional ways of solving problems uh, which MapReduce is solving today uh, in uh, in earlier days? Okay, we'll also understand how does a MapReduce program look like. We'll we'll do at least four Java programs today. Okay, we'll show you four Java programs today at least. Okay, we will uh, also discuss a little bit about Hadoop streaming. Okay, uh, which uh, which is a way to actually uh, run Java uh, run code without. Uh, uh, run MapReduce code without Java. Okay, So we will we'll discuss a little bit, we will not go into the detail here. We will understand the concept of combiner and partitioner obviously other than the map and reduce. We will also understand the data flow, we will understand how the input splits are done and then some of the input output formats. Okay, So these are the topics we are going to cover today. It might be a slightly long session, I will try to finish it in uh, 3 hours but uh, in case uh, I mean there are questions we might extend a little bit by 3 uh, around the 15 20 minutes okay not more than that it will not be a long one okay it will not be a 4 hour session that i can assure you okay so let's let's get started guys uh, let's see where some of the applications i mean these are this is not an exhaustive list but these are some of the applications where MapReduce is used today okay and there is a lot of scope in other uh, places as well where you can use MapReduce. okay so uh, what i expect from all of you is that you keep on just uh, just uh, just keep uh, keep typing on the chat window whenever you have a question or you are okay so just keep on giving me a heartbeat without my asking you okay uh, good morning amit so if, amit we've just started in one minute back we just discussed about the list of topics okay and now i'm 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 just starting where MapReduce is used okay so these are some of the use cases weather forecasting and you have huge weather data coming from multiple sensors and th that data is that data is kept, kept at multiple locations and you want to do a forecasting based on the data which you have. So you may have a data of the whole century and you may want to forecast when the next monsoon will come or what will be the temperatures going forward. So this is one place where processing speed is very important, getting good uh, processing is very important and, uh, and MapReduce finds a utility there. Okay. We will also see how traditionally these things are solved. Again, a very, very similar situation is in healthcare as well. Yes, Rahul is asking, can uh, MR be used for predictions of earthquakes and tsunamis, etc. Well, predictive, uh, predictive analysis, yes, definitely. MapReduce will be the bro programming backbone to get that data and process it. What processing you want to do, it, what, uh, uh, what analysis you want to do, will be done by a front-end analytical tool. It could be R, for example. Right, I mean, uh, if, if, if people know about R, R is a... Uh, programming language which is used as a front end to Hadoop these days. It's an open source uh, thing and uh, that is actually used to do the analysis, predictive analysis. Okay. Now MapReduce is used to crunch that data very fast, to get that data and do, uh, do a fast uh, retrieval of that data. Okay. We'll also see why MapReduce and why not other things. Yes, it can definitely be used to predict anything. Okay. It is not really MapReduce which is used to do the prediction. It is some other tool which will be used for the analysis. But MapReduce will help that tool. It will be the data store for that tool. Okay, to uh, get the data from Hadoop. Okay, is that fine, Rahul? Now, the other other utility of MapReduce is uh, healthcare. Okay, where huge amount of imagery data is there, some video data will be there, different sensor data will be there. Okay, and and we want to do a very good anal uh, analysis on this huge amount of data to understand uh, if, if there are problems and uh, issues like that. Okay, so that's one more area where then there is a utility sector, oil and gas industry. There are also huge amount of data is there. So I mean, at, uh, what I want to tell you here is that wherever there is a huge amount of data, as we saw in the class one, okay, MapReduce can be used to do the processing. Hadoop can be used to, I mean, HDFS can be used to do the data storage, and MapReduce will be used to do the processing. Okay, so let's like let's take an example of one of these uh, one of these industries and look at one data set. Okay, let me show you something here. Now I'll also show you this data on from the this place. Okay, so now this is the data. Uh, 
this is the data from a weather this is the weather data of all the years okay let me let me show it to you uh, show it show this data right from this website so you can also open it and you can see that whenever you get time let's look at one of the one of the data sets let's look at the data sets here okay so basically if you look at this right there were huge number of files now this is one of the data sets okay which is uh, which which has a id here okay the, probably the, this is the station id or something and then this is the date right and then there is a there is one column which shows the maximum temperature one column which shows the minimum temperature let's see which one are those columns yeah so basically if you open this readme file i mean i'll i'll i will send you the path to it we'll be doing some exercises on this data itself okay so if you look at this readme file which is there along with this data it says this is the weban number which is the uh, basically identifier for the station on this for where this data is taken then the columns are standard uh, the time here okay lst underscore date then you have the longitude and the latitude here then there is the column number uh, 39 to 45 is the daily max temperature and this is the daily min temperature okay so this is this is the readme file which tells you how this data is formatted okay now this is a unstructured file log data the formatting is here shown here and if you look at this data this is how it is so basically i believe column number 39 will be somewhere probably this one this one is the maximum temperature this is the minimum temperature okay but we can we can figure that out that's not a that's not the point here the point is that this is this is the format in which you will have actual data in real life this is a there is a actual data set which we have taken from this website and we'll see how to process this data fast okay and uh, and what are the challenges uh, challenges in pro processing this data now uh, i mean i'm sure a lot of you are from unix background okay and you would have seen uh, and you would have you've done some log processing earlier so can someone tell me what was the way if you had such a thing and if i had asked you to okay, tell me uh, uh, in this full file find out the maximum of this row and minimum of this row okay the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature what would you have done no problem if you have a windows background also how would you process this if you had this file how would you do that will you write a what program what scripting language what uh, what uh, commands you will use from from your background whatever you would do can you please tell me that i want everyone to answer that how will you handle such a situation if you had this okay so i have a couple of uh, couple of answers vinayak tells me using grep dayan tells me double sorting and vijay tells me in the windows world there is a utility called log parser with which you can so get get all sort of metrics okay and graphs okay okay what else anyone else who i mean i want everyone to actually think about this and answer it is very important we cannot be only listening to this okay so jitender amit abhishek i want everyone i mean it's, it's okay if you do not know the right answer okay but okay yeah that's also one way put data in a temp table and find min and max yeah right abhishek i want everyone to answer vikas and everyone to actually uh, answer this at least think about it for a while and then only we'll be able to appreciate the problem so narayan shyam everyone i want you to answer this okay okay so i have answers from almost everyone that's very nice so everyone has thought about it now my question could be that yes so satyam has given me a very good answer we can you can use excel function max and min right definitely that's that's one way excel is a very good analytical tool so definitely that is that is one way of doing it now uh, let me ask you another question now so if i if i tell you that out of these all these days classify them as hot or cold days depending upon 
if if the temperature rises over 40 on a per certain day put it as max and if the temperature goes below the if the temperature goes below uh, say 15 then put it as a cold day okay if we had to do that so similarly some people are saying about sql queries yes so it is not a very difficult problem to solve it is a solved problem so what's what's the what is the problem then i mean it's not a very difficult thing to solve uh, if, if I had to do that, I'll probably write a awk program in uh, in Unix to do that. Okay, if, if people do not know about awk, awk is a data parsing utility in uh, Unix. And I think Vinayak must be knowing about it since he, he told me about grep. But but anyways, there are multiple ways of, uh, yes, awk inside, right. So Vinayak, since you know about it, I want you, your homework will be to, I'll, on this data set, write a awk uh, uh, utility. Okay, write a awk script to actually send us back the results of on all the days, quantify, classify these days as good, or hot or cold days. Okay, so that's something I want Vinayak you to do using awk. For the others, whoever has given this answer that how you are going to do on this data set, you probably, you, you should go and try that and give, send that answer back. I do not mind whatever way you use for that. Okay. Is that fine with everyone? So whatever you've told me today that I'm going to do this, I want you to actually go back and try that out. Okay. So that you get a feel of how traditionally we were going to do, use it. Okay. Is, is that fine Abhishek with you as well? And great. Sure. So that's one thing which we want to do. Then only we'll be able to appreciate the problem. Now, uh, so we've, we've all of us have given some answer and all the answers were right. Okay. There was no right, wrong answer in this. So then, then what is the challenge? Can someone me can can someone tell me what is the challenge here in this case? If so, you have a large data set, right? Great. So Satyam tells me if the data set becomes large, then Dayanand tells me, uh, okay, Amit, uh, what do you have to do? Well, let me just repeat that for you. The data set which I showed you, I want you to find the minimum and a maximum temperature on each day. Okay, and then classify that date as either a hot day or a cold day using a traditional way, whatever you would think of. Okay, size of the data, right. Now, now see, this is, so everyone understands that the challenge is not in processing this log. If, if this was a say a few KB or a few MB log or even a few GB log, no one would have cared about it. You could have easily done that, right. Now, the problem comes when this data set becomes huge. Okay, now think of it this way, every day you have these uh, things being uh, uh, stored for each across the world, okay, so there will be huge amount of data, terabytes of data which will be there and as we've seen earlier also, I mean, the, we, it's very difficult to retrieve that data and uh, uh, do that uh, thing, uh, do the processing on that, right, so, so now one way of doing it traditionally was this, right, now what this means is, if you have a very big data, split that data. This is the this is the concept. Okay, split that data. Do a grep. Grep grep is a command of uh, in Unix to match regular expressions. Okay, so someone who doesn't know about that, don't worry. Grep is a command to do that. Okay, you have a huge data set. Process it in parallel. Split this data. Use grep. Then look at the matches and then do a cat and finally get a result. Okay. So this will tell you, this This is this divides the huge data, then you take out the important data out of that, whatever you want to do that, whatever matches, you do a cat, cat is a utility to combine all these things to get a result, okay. So this is the way of doing it, right. So now, even if the data set becomes large, you can use this, isn't it? So then what is the, what do you think could be the problem? If you had to write such a program, which could do all these things on a large data set, you split that data set and then you do a grep, assume that grep will solve your problem, then do a match and then do a cat. Can, can someone tell me what could be the, then what is the problem in this, in this scenario? Can you think about that? Or what are the challenges in writing such a program? Well, it will not take more time because you've anyway split the data, right? Vinayak. So even if it was one terabyte of data, you could have actually split this data into 1 GB, 100 or 1000 files of 1 GB, run it in parallel in different machines using grep, okay, and then do the matches and then do the cat. You can still store it in HDFS, right? On HDFS also you can run such commands, right? 
so tell me tell me what is the challenge i mean if we know we can store it in a distributed fashion now last time we had the challenge of uh, when we when we did that exercise of uh, number of minutes the challenge was how long will it take to read the data okay amit is telling me splitting of data okay so what is the challenge amit you see with splitting of data jitender rahul satyam uh, vijay everyone i want everyone to think about this 